Hey there, Nick Juntakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over running two different Git commands that's going to let you search your entire Git history for code that matches a specific string or regex, as well as a second command that's going to search through all of your Git commit messages. These could be really handy to run if you need to look something up that you may have read or commit a couple of weeks ago, months ago, years ago, maybe a couple of minutes ago, depending on your memory. And every single time I wanna run these commands, I always end up having to Google for it. So I figured now's a great time to make a video about it as well as a blog post. I'll leave a link to that one in the description. Basically, it's going to be a reference link to uh, all the commands that we run here on video. I don't know what commands those are, are going to be yet since this video is pretty ad hoc, but a reference will be there. Now. Both of these commands stem from running the git log command, and I'm operating inside of a dockerized Flask example app. This is also up on GitHub. I'll leave a link to this one in the description, but feel free to follow along or try it out on any local Git repo that you have. And let's start off by searching for a specific term that may exist in your code for any previous commit, not just code that exists in the current working directory. And uh, for this, we're gonna start with the dash S flag here, capital S. And according to Git's documentation, this stands for pickaxe. Basically, it's a way to do a string search throughout uh, all the commits in your code looking for a specific string. So you can basically think like S a string. We're gonna see pretty soon that you can do G for a regex as well. But let's start with doing just a string first here. And uh, this is an example Flask application, so it's Python based. I'm using a tool called Celery here. So I'm just going to search the code base for that. And it's going to give us back a list of all commits that contain at least the word celery once or more. And we're going to go over how we can modify this command a little bit later to make it a little bit more user friendly. But, you know, let's say that we go and take this commit here, copy it, and then we can do a git show on the SHA. We'll see that we do find the word celery here at least once. And we can see all the details about that commit, as well as lines that don't even match celery. But still, this is pretty good information, right? We can see that this commit has celery at least uh, mentioned once. We can see even twice, and it may even be uh, listed more here. Yep, down here below a couple of times. And uh, that's pretty handy, right? But if you had to run this command here and then individually, you know, copy this git commit and then we get show on there, like that could get a little bit tedious. So uh, the makers of git here, get it here, they added uh, another flag here for patch that we can just run. And now we can just page through all the results for all the commits. So we can see that we have one commit here that uh, shows that we are referencing the word celery here at least once, but right underneath that we have a different commit. And I can just page down through all the results here and see all the matches for Celery here pretty easily. And uh, yeah, this is pretty handy. I definitely run this one every couple of months because you know you might be working on, let's say a couple of different services. Like for example, I have some client work where I'll implement something on service one today, but then we'll roll that out to production, maybe test it out a couple of uh, weeks or something like that. And then I'll go back and implement the same thing on a different service. And sometimes I find myself wanting to go and look at the previous state of something in a different service and basically reference that back to another service. Um, yeah, so that's one use case, but I'm sure you can have uh, many different others. Let me know in the comments below. But in addition to that, so like right now I am checked out to the main branch, uh, we can add another flag here, which is going to be the all flag, which will allow us to search through all the branches and tags available in your Git project. And for this case, Celery, I don't think it's gonna really make a difference. In fact, I actually don't even know how many branches I have in this repo here. So it looks like I have a local feature branch where I added custom UIDs and GIDs to this project. Uh, I'll leave a card up for that one. I actually made a video about that if you're interested, but okay, so I have two branches here around UIDs. So let me go and do a search for UID here and we'll do the all flag as well. And we should see some matches here in that one feature branch over here, and we do. So yeah, if we scroll down here, we can probably see some for uh, a tag as well. So that's pretty handy, right? In case you just want to search for something across multiple branches, that could save you some time from having to manually do like a get checkout on some branches there. And uh, there's other limitations, or not limitations, but options that we can continue adding on. So let's get rid of the all flag just for now and go back to the celery example. and. Let's say that you want to do your search, but you don't want to search all the files. Like maybe you want to do a search through a specific directory or maybe a specific file type. So if I run this command again here, we can see that we are dealing with markdown files here. There's like a change log. Uh, there's also, yeah, this uh, text file probably somewhere for the requirements at text. But yeah, basically we have markdown files, Python files, we have git ignore files. And, you know, let's just say that I wanted to limit this just to Python files. So we can just start tagging on like different uh, properties to this command, which is very similar to how you might do some filtering with other Git commands as well. So you can do double dashes and then whatever pattern that you might wanna do. So let's just say, you know, recursively go through all directories, that's a double star there. And we'll just do a match on all the Python files. So now we can see that we only get matches back for uh, app.py there and whatever other Python files uh, I might have here. And it, it turns out that uh, that's it. 
Uh, sorry, my throat is a little bit scratchy today, but you can see, right, there's no uh, results here for the changelog. But if I wanted to do markdown files instead, then sure, I can do that. And there's the one for changelog. And there's probably going to be another one for a readme file somewhere down here. doesn't really matter, but you get the idea. Yep, there's a readme file there. So that's pretty handy too. And, uh, you know, if we take a look here at the directory structure of this project, this project has a couple of directories, what nested directories and you know, depending on what uh, type of project you have, you know, you might want to search through, I don't know, uh, a templates directory for a specific string, but maybe your app has, I don't know, a couple different directories that each have their own template directory. So, you know, you can do whatever you want here with Git just to, you know, do some, you know, further uh, directory structure type of things here where maybe you just want to look through all template directories for, I don't know, like what would be something like a doc type or something. I'm just thinking of something that might exist in like a, an HTML file, but you don't need to even choose a file type as well. If I just do this, then I think we should get some matches here. And we can see here too, like it's in the hello directory, then we have templates and layouts and index.html, and like there's a doc type over there. So, you know, this isn't really specific to the uh, get log command. You can use this type of filtering stuff for other commands as well. But uh, yeah, let's see, is there anything else that we can do? Yes, so we just did a demonstration of how to do a string search, but you know, let's say that you want to do a regular expression instead. So instead of doing dash S here, which is string, you can do dash G, which you can think if you pronounce like, you know, regex there or regex, if you want to do like a hard G, you can just think of that. Uh, that's like pretty, you know, uh, what's that word? You know, it kind of matches to like what it what it's typed out to be. Uh, that's going to kill me. So yeah, maybe I'll overlay a thing later. Anyways, not important. But uh, yeah, let's say that we want to do a search for, I don't know, let me go to a different repo. I'll go to my uh, dot files repo here and let's do a search for, I don't know, like some, like an alias type of thing. So we can start our regex off here, like lines that start with this. And then uh, is it going to be alias? I think it is going to be alias space. And then it's going to be a word, either one or more words and then an equal sign. And then actually let me use single quotes here because we're going to need double quotes here. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Cool. Okay. And then we'll do any character there and we'll wrap this in quotes, and then we'll say the line ends with that, and then we should see some stuff, like let's see. Uh, yeah, cool, so let's use the dash p flag again just so we can page through it here. And we can see all sorts of different git commits here that have uh, alias here matched, and I don't see it yet, but it's probably gonna be in here somewhere. Yep, there we go, there's a whole bunch of them over here for this commit. And if we go to the next commit here, we can see like, okay, cool, there it is there. And you know, this is just a regular example of using regular expressions here. You know, I'm not gonna make this video focus on any more complex regular expressions. You know, you can always Google for that or maybe I'll do a separate video, but you know, that's how you can use this git log command to search through some code doing regular expression matches. So let me go back to that previous directory we were working with before and uh, go on to maybe searching for git commit messages here. So if I do a git log, we can see a complete list of all the uh, git commit messages for the entire project. And this is kind of interesting, like sometimes you might know exactly what code you want to search for, but oftentimes I'll just remember a specific git commit message that I wrote like, you know, I don't know, eight months ago, and I kind of have no idea what the code was, but like I just want to see the code that's related to that git commit message. So in this case, you know, let's just do a, a silly example here or something, like I'll just do a search for folks and we'll hopefully get this git commit, git commit message back here. So we can run the get log command here, but we can just use the grep flag here. And this will take in either a string or a regular expression. There's not different flags that we need to do. So let's do uh, a search for folks here and we'll do the dash P again, like usual. And, but yeah, we can see here that uh, this get commit message has the word folks in it. And I don't think it exists in other commits or maybe it does because I tend to use that word a lot. Uh, where is the word folks in here? Let's see who can find it first. Oh, there it is. Cool. Uh, but yeah, this is actually super handy, right? So, you know, going back to the git log over here, uh, if you have a multi-line git commit message, it's going to search all the lines, not just the first line. And uh, yeah, there you go. So if you wanted to do a regex match instead, you can totally do that if you'd like. Uh, yeah, there's no good examples here that I can see off the top of my head. Like, I don't know, like front dash end, like any word dash end, like it doesn't really matter, right? This is not a video on regular expressions, but you know, if we do uh, like something like this, it's all characters with a dash and all characters. Uh, let's see what we get back here. Yeah, so we can see front end that matches. Why? Because like, you know, any characters dash any characters. So like all this matches and then dash and then everything after that. Kind of a silly example or contrived example here, but you know, I'm sure you have some good ideas that you may want to do when it comes to searching for very specific things in your code base. Um, yeah, and I think that's all I want to cover for this video. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know, you know, if you're going to be using these commands or maybe there are slightly better patterns for certain things. Uh, definitely happy to hear that stuff. So yeah, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.